Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're on ACC looking back at a series I won very recently, the SRO Esports Championship. My second season of it, I won the first season. Uh, the video to that is in the card above where I won it at Spar against David Tanitza. It was a very close championship. This time around though, different story altogether. It was five races instead of ten and there were more people in the mix for the championship. I did end up winning it, but it was, it was a very, very up and down season as I'll show you throughout this video. So yeah. Round number one was at Masano, so qualifying was 30 minutes long, the race was an hour long, and you can see there qualifying, we started 16th in the pro class, and there's a pro class and silver class, so in total there's about 40 to 50 cars on the grid, and yeah, we qualified 16th in the pro class, 18th overall, not a good start to the championship at all, we've got Eamon Murphy there and the other McLaren, the Veloce McLaren, uh, two places ahead of us we go around the outside of Aston or the Aston Martin at turn one which is is good but he sort of gets us back anyway so we, we hold position then in the first few corners it's not too bad not great though and there's a lot of work to do to try and get some points um, and you got the, the usual names up there David Tanitza, Dara McCormack, Tobias Gronewald all the the quick aliens on ACC this is where they come together it's the pinnacle of ACC basically this, this championship so uh it doesn't get any higher in terms of the level than this and we've had a, a, a decent first few corners we've made a couple of positions up you can see they're going down the inside of the Bentley at the left hander and we do hold that position so a good start but a long way to go yet before we score any points and the McLaren around Masano it, it wasn't strong it to be honest I think we could have done maybe a better job uh, but it definitely wasn't a car that you could qualify in the top five with you know on this particular occasion so we just had to do the best with what we had, really, and that's how you how you win a championship is you minimise the lows more than kind of maximising the highs. You see what I mean? So if you can score at every race, at the end of it, you're going to be in a good position. So you can see that Eamon, whilst trying to lap or get past the Mercedes, kind of the car just bounces off the Merc and just goes far and into the wall. So really unfortunate there for uh, for Eamon, who was ahead of me and we were making good progress through the field before that incident so we do gain a position from that uh, so we are currently 15th and coming to the mandatory pit stop where you do you need to do one litre of fuel you don't have to take tyres so it's literally a three second stop uh, we decide to box early basically and do the undercut because we're stuck in traffic it's very hard to overtake an ECC and at Masano so we decided to do the undercut there's a pit window between I believe it's uh, 20 minutes into the race, oh no, 15 minutes into the race, and then it goes all the way through to 45 minutes. There's a half hour pit window, so it's up to you when you want to decide to pit. And we, on this particular occasion, decided to do the undercut, just to see if we can make something happen, leapfrog a few cars, and we, we don't actually make any progress. So we do make a move there on the Mercedes in the penultimate corner, because uh, he made a bit of a mistake, so that's good. But the pit stop, the undercut, it didn't really gain us anything. I think it actually lost us uh, one or two positions. So you can see there the BMW, the Bentley, the Ferrari all fighting and I'm just sort of biding my time here. Uh, being quite aggressive because, you know, that's the only way you can make moves really is getting a, getting a bit punchy. Um, you can see there they're side by side going into the slow section, the end of sector one. And at this point, I'm just, yeah, waiting for them two to make contact or something. But you'll see on the exit of this left-hander, lovely double overtake uh, do take to the grass and we get two moves in one the bmw the bentley happy days uh i do actually get a penalty for that move after the race but it did get rescinded so it's, it, it was a weird one i think the stewards got it wrong and they did retract it so that was that was good in the end i think it was a five second penalty but it doesn't matter and we made good progress through the field so currently p9 with not many laps to go i think there's four or five laps to go and already a good race, you know, we qualified 16th or 18th overall and we've gone up to 9th, up the inside of the Ferrari into this hairpin. And to be honest, you look at that move, that was a bit naughty and I'm surprised I didn't get a penalty for that. Um, but it's just one of those, I, you know, he sort of turned in, but to be honest, I, I was a little bit out of control going to the apex of the corner. I got the move done, wasn't very proud of it, but you know it is what it is I didn't get a penalty for that strangely and I got a penalty for the other one so weird but anyway we are now P8 and two more cars are in sight 
Vanderveld and Locio right ahead of us. They're fighting quite hard. So a potential P6 on the card. So you can see the gap between Locio and Tausha is 7.6 seconds. So we're never going to get that in a few laps. So P6 is the maximum we can get, bar any mistakes from anyone else. You can see they're going into the final corner. Locio and Vanderveld make contact. We take advantage of another double overtake, which was very unexpected, but good and needed. And now we're P6 overall. So we've made up 12 positions at Misano uh, in less than an hour. So, I mean, a bit of good fortune, some good moves, some brave moves. And somehow we've ended up in the top six, which, yeah, there was a penalty, but it got rescinded. So we do keep sixth. You can see there the fighting behind us was crazy. <laughs> as uh, I think Locio gets punted there by, I think that was Van der Velde. So yeah, a good recovery drive. Uh, and in a short championship like this, you need to score at every race. If you have a, a zero next to your name at any of the rounds, you can pretty much say goodbye to the championship. You know, it's, it's all about consistency. Uh, so you can see there, 15 points, not quite 34 points that Dara scored for winning, but we're in the hunt. You know, it, it sets us off with some good points. We're obviously sixth in the championship as well. It's only been one race. And we move on to round two then at Zandvoort. The McLaren was a bit stronger than it was in Misano. Uh, the Bentley was strong. The Ferrari was strong. And you can see we qualified second uh, next to David Tinitz, who took pole, second pole, actually, I think. Or no, I, I think that was his first pole. But anyway, he was very strong in qualifying. You can see there we're less than a tenth to pole. Um, it was a, as a lap I was very, very proud of, actually. It was a really good lap. I think some drivers didn't deliver uh, to their full potential, hence why we're so far up the grid. But listen, we'll, we'll take it. And moving into the race then, into turn one, very dark, it was a night race, and the temp from, from memory, the temperatures were really hot as well. So we do hold second. We don't quite get to Nitzer into turn one, but we're gonna fight P3 going into this right-hander and then into the hairpin. We've got P2 covered, so that's good. We can sort of go with David now, try and build a gap to the guys behind and try and nick the win off him at some point. This is an hour race, so it's, it's a sprint race and it's the sprint series, but it is a long time, you know, you can bide your time. We wanted to make a gap and then I'll hopefully maybe get him in the pit stops or do an overtake later on in the race. But if I go for a move now, we're just going to back each other up into the pack and potentially get taken out or fall backwards into, you know, into the guys behind, which we don't want. So on lap 24, I decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's try something here. Let's try an undercut, force them into boxing. I, I thought I had better race pace than David anyway. Um, I think the McLaren held on to its tyres a bit better than the Ferrari. And yeah, I thought, let's try it. Let's try an undercut. Undercuts don't typically work in this game because you come out and your tyres are cold, low on pressure, hence why, and then naturally you're going to be a bit slower. And the overcut does seem to work quite well. But I thought if I nail the outlap and he has a bit of traffic or a, a dodgy pit stop, we might get him. So you can see there, he rejoins and we just get ahead. We break quite late into turn one to make sure we get the move done. And we got the lead. So, I mean, it was a, it was a good undercut. I think he did get held up by a bit of traffic uh, when I watched the replay back. So that was a, a little bit fortunate for us, but I, I knew at this point I could pull away. Uh, I just, I think he was struggling. The more the race went on, the tire wear was really hurting him. And uh, I knew he would fall backwards into the guys behind, so Amir, McCormack, etc. So nothing really happened. It was a very boring race, but we got the job done, got the win. Uh, I think that's my fourth win in SRO Esports. So first of the season, 34 points. We didn't get the point for pole. David got that. So uh, it, again, a much needed result to stay in the championship. So you can see there, 11 points off David in the championship, who's in the lead. McCormack's right up there as well. Me, Gronowald, and a bit of a gap back to Tausha. So slowly becoming a four-horse race, uh, even only after round two. And there's three more to go. So the third round was at Nürburgring. And we qualified not too bad, not great. The McLaren, again, wasn't the quickest car. It weren't bad, but it wasn't great. We qualified sixth two less than two temps off pole and i mean if you look at the next mclaren amir and murph all the way down in 20th and 22nd so you know clearly showing you that the mclaren wasn't the car to have around here but you know in the race it's always good at, at tire saving so you can always kind of get a result out of it um going into turn one then 
I mean, that shot is brilliant. You've got Bentley, Mercedes, Ferrari, BMW, Lamborghini, McLaren, all fighting for the lead. I think it's just it's great. You know, the, the custom bop, people complain about it. And to be fair, sometimes it can be a bit, a bit wrong. But uh, over the course of this season, it wasn't that bad. You know, there were some questionable bops, but it, you know, there's always going to be a, a dispute. But anyway, back into the race. We've had a decent first few corners. And on the exit of turn four there, we actually double shifted on the upshift. Well, it's my mistake, human error. And it cost us the position to McCormack on the outside there in the Bentley. Uh, we had the move done. To be fair, we might have even mounted a move on Sherritt in the Lamborghini, but that double upshift really cost me on the exit. And uh, yeah, annoying. We lost uh, at least one or two positions there, which defined our race. You know, you'll find out later on in the race, McCormack goes on to win. Uh, if I held that position, would he have done that? Who knows? Um, but yeah, still P8, not the end of the world. We're with the lead, the lead group, and we can do something with it. So, but we need to start outscoring McCormack and Tinitza if we're going to mount a championship challenge. Really, uh, share it there. I don't know if he made a mistake or he got a little bit of contact there from McCormack, but he ends up going wide in the left-hander, loses a spot to McCormack. His tyres are going to be a bit dirty, so we're going to be a, a bit aggressive and try and get past him here. A um, little bit of a slipstream, but you can't really overtake in the chicane. It's so, it's so quick uh, that there's not really any opportunity there. So the other thing as well with the chicane is you've got the bump there where the McLaren, it seems to be the only car over bumps and curbs which really struggles. And to be honest, it glitches out sometimes and it will just throw the car off completely. Uh, so we have to be careful of that the whole race, which is not nice to drive around, but you can see there, we're, again, going for the undercut, but a, a severe undercut. So as soon as the pit lane opened, 15 minutes into the race, we were straight in with, as you can see there, the BMW of Nils Nujox, uh, thought had the same idea. So I thought I was in traffic. I can't really get past the guys ahead. I was behind them for 10 minutes. I, I did try a few things, but I just could not make a move. So I thought, undercut, let's, let's try and make it work. Hopefully when we undercut, they'll fight between themselves, lose each other time and we can make some positions up. So, Robbie Stapleford, I think that is, in the BMW behind, he boxed a lap later and just rejoined behind us. That's Tanitza leaving the pit lane. So, Nils has had a very good undercut there. He's, he's jumped Tanitza and probably a few other cars as well. And you can see they're fighting on the exit there of turn one. Nils gets the move done. Tanitza is fighting him quite hard going into turn three, but ultimately Nils keeps the position. So. That's good. I mean, Tanitz is one of the main championship rivals, so we caught him very, very quickly. Again, he seemed to struggle. You can see there a big mistake from me getting on the gravel in the Schumacher S, which gives Stapleford a good chance to get over, to overtake me into this left-hander. We kind of hold it around the outside, keep our nose in there so he can't get the move done. And aggressive, but no contact. Good racing from both of us there, I think. And uh, you can see there, Robbie, I think he was like, you know, come on, let's work together to get back on the back end of Tanitza. So, yeah, the, the Ferrari all season seemed to struggle in the race, which is really strange. You know, in Quali, David was rapid, and then in most races, he would just fall backwards, which is uh, very strange. But uh, you can see there at Turn 1, we went for a move, almost got it done, and he does defend very well, to be fair, and keeps the position. So this is not good for our race, because obviously we're losing time now to the cars that haven't pitted yet. So McCormack, Blyer, Van der Velde, Sherratt, we're losing time to all of them. And, but at the same time, if I stuck behind him, I'd also be losing time. So I, I was confident I could get the move done. Uh, so lap 17, going into turn one again, we've got a good toe. And we're gonna go for the outside. He defends quite hard. We're gonna break very late in a straight line and then pivot, get the undercut basically. And uh, we do get the move done. It was a very good exit from turn one. And yeah, it was a good move. And into, I think it was P18 at the time, but that's probably a net P6, P7. So. Let's watch it again. You can see there he defends a very tight line, comes out, so he does everything he needs to do. And I think we're so close there to making contact, um, but I do get the move done. Very happy with that move. It was on the official stream as well, so uh, happy days. And yeah, as I say, we can now use our pace to undercut a few cars if possible. But you can see there, lap 22, so not long left of the race. This is at the end of the pit window, so 15 minutes to go now. Van der Velde rejoins just in front of us, which is really frustrating because it's so hard to overtake, especially 
on this particular track with the Bentley. I just could not find a way past. So he did not make a mistake there at turn one. We're side by side going into turn two, but there's nothing I can do. You know, he parks it well, he defends well. I sort of want to go for a move here, but again, he defends. I can't do anything. It's a big car to try and pass. Um, so I think it's going to be more difficult to overtake him than the Ferrari. Um, but we're P6, so we did undercut Sherrett. Uh, we got past Tanitsa, obviously. Uh, Camera and Stapleford behind have got penalties. And if you look at the list of names on the left, the ones with white numbers are pro cars. The ones with silver numbers are silver silver cars. So Blyer, for example, we're doing a really good job being a silver, but he's on course for an overall podium against the pros, you know. So undoubtedly, people like that next season, if there is a next season, will be a pro. Um, but yeah, this was the final lap. You can see I had a good chance to try and mount a, a move on Van der Velde going into the chicane. I don't quite get it done. And we do finish P6 overall, P5 in class. Obviously, Blyer's a silver. So not bad with McCormack winning the race again, his second win of the season. It's not great, but it's not bad. You know, we beat Tanitza, uh, we closed the gap on him. Gronewald finished ahead of us as well. But yeah, McCormack really stretching his legs there at the top of the championship, 93 points. We're on 67 with two rounds to go. You know, I'm, I'm never, I never give up. I never say it's over, but it was very unlikely I was gonna be able to turn that round, you know? 34 points for a win, and I'm almost a whole win behind McCormack in points. Oh, I think I am actually. No, I'm not. My, my maths is really bad. You can see there though, round four qualifying, we qualified quite far down, 13th on the grid. McCormack uh, was just ahead of us. Tanitza though was right at the front, so, and Grunewald was behind us. So, not bad, not great. Um, Tanitza though, you can see going into turn one, a championship defining moment, he gets taken out and then absolutely obliterated by a number of cars. Uh, very unfortunate. And McCormack, on the exit of Turn 1, again, absolutely destroyed by a car. And when you have these kind of crashes in ACC, it's game over. There's no point carrying on because there's just too much damage. And they were both out of the race after the first two corners. So my two main championship rivals, out. Grunewald's behind me. So very, very fortunate from, from my side. You can see they were going on for a move on the Honda. Uh, but he does hold, hold it quite well off the circuit, but you know, he had nowhere to go to be fair. We're now P7, starting, we started way back, like P15, uh, and the McLaren round Hungara ring I thought wasn't a very good car, but you can see Amir was right up there. So fair play to Amir on this particular race. He nailed it, he was so fast. And me and Murphy did an okay job in quali. We just had no pace compared to Amir. So we were scratching the reds a bit, but as I say, on the first lap, got very lucky, both championship rivals out. Gronewald's behind us so I immediately went into full aggressive mode like I need to make sure I score some big points to uh, make the most of this gift in a way you know it's very very fortunate what happened for me very unfortunate for them and you know it's one of those situations it's racing uh, you saw there we did go for a move on Tausha who had a penalty and he was really struggling for like three or four laps I don't know what was going on uh, but we, we actually outbroke ourselves on the first time round and looked a bit silly but on this time round we get the move done up into p4 overall which is a really good point tool and i couldn't believe my luck i really couldn't so when we got to the pit stop we was p3 although i think we're still net p4 because someone boxed and uh yeah i think it was jordan grant smith actually in the porsche who put it on pole run away at the front and won the race so fair play to him it's a very hard field to try and beat and win at this level so uh yeah good job from him we come out in a group of cars. I think we come out net P4. It's, there was a bit of a gap to P3, P2 and P1, so we couldn't really close the gap, uh, as you'll see over the course of the race. And yeah, for the championship, a great, great result. You see, we're lapping a, a Bentley who's got some damage on the side there, clearly caught up in those early incidents. And the cars are just ahead of us. So you've got Stapleford, Locio. Uh, I think Locio was yet to box, but yeah, Stapleford just ahead of us. So. 1.5, 1.7. We were reeling him in very slowly, uh, so there was a chance for podium, overall podium, but it, it doesn't matter. He's a silver, so although I finished behind him on track, I still get the same points in the pro class as I would if I didn't overtake him, so it wasn't a, 
immediate. It wasn't urgent. I didn't have to get past him. So we finish P4 uh, in pro class, P5 overall, and 21 points compared with Gronewald, who scored five, and then McCormack and Tanitza scored none. So huge day in the championship with one round to go. We're now five points behind McCormack, 88 points. He's still on 93. Gronewald's on 77. Tanitza's on 75. Four horse race. Four drivers could win going into the final race. And it was wet at Monza. So when I when I saw it was going to be wet, I was quite happy because it, it just McLaren in the wet. I, I know it quite well. It's it's a strong car in the wet. The Mercedes on this particular day were absolutely flying in fairness. And you can see that we qualified third, honestly, right? One of the laps of my life in the wet. Yeah, it was just so hooked up at the end of the session when it was at its quickest. And we, yeah, we qualified third, just over a tenth away from pole. And it's going to be a very high pressure, intense race with four men who can win the championship. So, Gronewald's P2 and, and understandably fighting very hard with Ciclari on pole, Tanitza's down in 11th, and then McCormack had a very, very poor session. I don't think the Bentley was at the races, to be fair, but he qualified 16th. So championship as it stands, we would win the championship. So we just need to stay where we are. Although you can see that Gronewald, very aggressive on the exit of turn one, but gets the move done. So Clary won't be too happy about that, but he takes the lead. We're second. Again, as it stands, we still are on course to win the championship. But on halfway through the first lap, Schoeniger, who is Gronewald's teammate uh, in the Merck, very aggressive, gets the move done going into Ascari. I'm not going to fight too hard. I don't, we actually make a bit of contact there, but I wasn't going to risk a crash or anything like that with his teammate. I let him go. Again, as it stands, even if I finish third and Gronewald wins, I just about win the championship. So, I mean, luckily he didn't get a point for pole or anything like that. You've got Sherratt then in the Lamborghini behind us, mounting a, a challenge going into the Parabolica or the final corner. And... It, there's puddles everywhere like offline so you've got to be careful that you don't get caught up by one and then end up spinning or anything like that so I was it was weird I was being cautious but at the same time I had to get my elbows out so I, if I dropped to fourth and Gronewald won the, won the race so we had to stay resilient and keep hold of P3 if we wanted to win the championship providing that Tobias wins the race you can see that on the exit of turn two we get two wheels on the curb and in the wet very slippy engage the TC and we had a really, really poor exit. So Jordan, up the inside of turn three, is yeah, gets the move done quite comfortably with a better exit. And the top end of that Lamborghini seems pretty decent as well. So we dropped to P4, which is now we're not on course to win the championship. Tobias would win as it stands. So we had to try and make something happen. Uh, towards the end of lap two, or on the exit of Ascari, you'll see here that Jordan mounts the kerb on the inside quite a lot and the car doesn't like it at all it almost fires him off into the wall to be honest and he gets a bad exit so we're going to follow him down in the slipstream a lot of spray so it's hard to see but that's what a wiper's for and we got a good run on him then going into the final corner and we sort of get the move done but he lets off the brake very late on and just tags our rear end which upsets the car but what it does it gives us a little bit of damage i think it, got, it gave me like three to four seconds worth of damage which seems a bit much it, it was only a little tap but it must have just hit the wrong area and it cost us a lot of pace. You know, we dropped off quite a lot after that. Uh, so Tanitza there, you can see championship critical gets a penalty. It says zero seconds in the replay, but in fact, it was five seconds. It must have been for some contact or something like that. So he was behind us anyway, but it, even better. You know, there's a bit more buffer there to play with. So McCormack is down in 21st position. So not having a good race. The Bentley in the wet probably just isn't working. And we just need to get back into third position to, to beat Tobias. He's having a, a great race and he's got Schoeniger there as teammate to, you know, be a rear gunner. So the two Mercs, the two teammates, boxed a lap earlier than me and Jordan. The undercut doesn't really work in this game. It's more the overcut that's OP. And you can see when we rejoin, we're closer together with them. Jordan's in front of them. Everyone goes wide. So I was too busy watching what they were doing. And what happened when we did that is everyone got a track cut penalty. It turns out, though, you can see that Tobias got a drive-through because he already had three warnings. I had two warnings, so I was on my third warning now. But Tobias just went one too many, and when he went over that chicane, he got a drive-through penalty, and that was it. He had, to, he had to come in, and that's championship over for him, which, crazy. You know, again, very fortunate that that happened. I mean, Tobias wasn't in the lead when he rejoined, but 
there's a fair chance he would have won the race. McCormack down in 15th, Tanitza down in 6th. It's enough for us to take the championship at the final race. I could not believe it. You know, we were 67, we were a fair few points behind McCormack with two races to go. The final two races just went our way. Another podium, 25 points. And so, yeah, we basically end the championship with a decent buffer behind us to Dara, 113 points to 98, which, I mean, it doesn't look close, but obviously you've just seen it was extremely close between the four of us the whole season. And people like Shera, Nils Nujoks, Amir were all up there in most of the races. It's just, yeah, us four were able to consistently score a little bit better. Um, and yeah, the, the thing that won me that championship was the lows, you know, not dipping too low. My, my lowest position was sixth. So it was the consistency. I only won one race. I didn't even get a pole position, but I managed to somehow win the championship in the McLaren. I don't think the McLaren was pound for pound the best car over the course of the series or the quickest, but it's always a, a solid car to choose in wet, dry, cold, hot, in the race, in qualifying, it's a bit poor, but it's always a, a decent bet over the course of a championship. So yeah, extremely happy to win SRO Esports for the second time, a lot closer i think than the, the first series with four drivers being able to win it until the end but yeah i hope you enjoyed watching the video give it a thumbs up if you did sub to the channel as always much appreciated if you do that and yeah i look forward to seeing you guys on the next video cheers